Hi, Mama. Hi, I'm Zach. We're from Eckert Public Library, and we're here at the Auburn Cord Duesenberg Automobile Museum. We're gonna talk to Elise Faulkner. She is Education and Programs Manager. And we are going to learn a little bit about the engineering that goes into their awesome cars. Let's go on in. So this room that we're standing in was actually uh, opened in 1930 and it was the showroom for the Auburn uh, Automobile uh, Company as well as a showcase for Cord Automobiles like the one that's right behind me uh, and Duesenberg Automobiles like the one that's right here next to you. Okay? So uh, the Auburn Automobile Company, Cord Corporation and Duesenberg Motors Inc. were actually involved in uh, a, a great deal of automotive uh, engineering feats uh, in the 1920s and 30s. So the Cord L29, uh, like the one behind us here, was actually the first production front wheel drive car, which nowadays uh, front wheel drive cars are almost ubiquitous. So many of us have driven a front wheel drive car. This uh, was one of the first ones uh, ever developed and put into production. So this automobile also has the unique uh, um, engineering feat of being one of the first automobiles to use CV joints. This vehicle right in front of us is a 1925 Miller Junior 8. Uh, so this automobile actually, E.L. Court was watching in a race uh, and he noticed while this vehicle actually only came in second place, he noticed how smooth it handled and how uh, it seemed to really hug the road in a way that he enjoyed. So he actually looked at the front end of this vehicle, which is a front wheel drive. So this was before front wheel drives were in production uh, for, for the regular consumer, but race cars had them. So this vehicle he actually used as a sort of direct model in order to model the Ford L29 uh, front wheel drive. So this was his actual inspiration for that vehicle's front wheel drive. Early on in automotive engineering, a lot of uh, automobile manufacturers were extremely secretive. They wanted to make sure that they kept all their secrets to themselves. They would send spies to other companies and things <laughs> in order to actually try and take their good ideas. So uh, it was really common to share a lot of those ideas between each other. Is there a spy department here? Uh, unfortunately, not anymore, uh, but there were definitely spies that the Auburn Automobile Company would have sent out, and they also would have had spies come in to uh, try and steal their ideas. Oh my gosh. I mean, I'm sure Zach would be more than happy to add an automotive design spy to this list. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, That's been a resume goal for a long time. Yes. <laughs> unfortunately, we're not looking, but I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I absolutely love it. So this is Alan Leamy's office. And so what was Leamy's role with ACE? So Alan Leamy actually was uh, a designer for the Auburn Automobile Company. So he would actually draw uh, it car designs like this one that would later get turned into full automobiles. So his role was really designing the styling and look for all of the automobiles that would be produced. So some of these are automobiles uh, that were his visions for how some of our cars should look. That is cool. These are actually his drawings? Yep, these are actually his drawings signed by him. And you can actually see he has a fantastic signature with this AHL little insignia there. That's so cool. A designer like Alan Leamy would draw plans for a vehicle. It then had to be actually designed in 3D. So it would then be done in clay. And this is actually still how automobiles are designed. They're built in scale models of uh, automotive clay, which is actually not like clay that you play with at home. It's really hard uh, and actually requires heating in order to uh, firm it up. But uh, so actually one of the awesome innovations here at the Auburn Automobile Company was actually this U-shaped styling bridge. So this was awesome because it allowed designers uh, and our sculptors here to be able to map out specific points so that they could perfectly create symmetrical models. So this U-shaped styling bridge is still used today. So it's a very simple tool uh, for designers to uh, engineer their scale models perfectly uh, aligned. 
Whoa, the unboxing. That's how new it is. <laughs> um, I just got these on Monday. It's been a two year process um, to get these custom built for us from Trine Innovation One. Whoa. So back when the Albright Automobile Company was operating, we didn't have wind tunnels in order to test vehicles. But nowadays, vehicle models are tested in wind tunnels. So we have our foam or our clay, uh, which we can then add to our vehicle puck. And students can come in here and they can design their own vehicle. So I'm partial to what I call the Spinosaurus vehicle model. So. Our students can design their own vehicle and then actually test it here in our wind tunnel. So once our vehicle's attached here, I can turn on my blower. And it's gonna actually pull on this scale here that's attached and it's gonna tell me uh, a reading uh, of the amount that our uh, vehicle here is pulling, okay? So in doing so, we can actually see how much drag our vehicle has here in our wind tunnel. So you can feel the amount of air that's coming out through the back here, it's pretty strong. So then, our future engineers, when they come to do this program, they can actually then modify their vehicles to create the, uh, the most efficient uh, vehicle that they're able to build. So this is using the engineering design process that uh, humanity's been using for building things since we first invented the wheel. So uh, basically by testing uh, and retesting until we've perfected our finished model, we can end up creating automobiles just like the designers here would have done. So while they didn't have access to wind tunnels like we do today, they use the same exact principles of testing and retesting uh, and trying to find the best solution to create the best vehicle that they had available to oh, us. I love that. That's really cool. Auburn Court Duesenberg has really been very involved in the automobile engineering process pretty much since the very early stages, right? Absolutely. So the Auburn Automobile Company got its start in 1900 uh, and they were a very early automobile company. So really we got, we have the fortune to be able to see many of the early innovations that made modern automobiles possible today. So we're really very fortunate. So unfortunately, I barely got to scratch the surface with you guys about some of the awesome engineering feats that happened here. So uh, hopefully you can encourage some people to come out and check out our cars. Each one of them has a really interesting history uh, and each one has a really good story behind it. And the Library of Things at the Library has museum passes that you can check out to come to the Auburn Court Duesenberg Automobile Museum um, for free. Yeah, we'd welcome you guys to be able to come out anytime. Well, thanks a lot, Elise, for showing us around this example of preserved engineering right here in Auburn. And it's been awesome to see everything. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you guys are able to come out. Thank you.